Hi everyone, today we are looking at an O-level type question on set, language and notation, and sets and Venn diagrams. So let's jump right in. Over here we see, it says that xi, this alphabet we call it xi in the Greek, uh, equals to integers of x, where by x is greater or equal to 3, and strictly less than 13. So this is actually the symbol for universal set. So it's the universal set means the set with all the possible elements in it. And then we have set A, which gives me all the prime numbers. We have set B, which contains all the multiples of 6. And set C is factors of 24. So let's just write down each one um, clearly. So in the universal set, xi equals to uh, integers uh, where it's between 3 and 13, so we include, this is or equal to, right? So we include 3, and it's all integer, so it's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and we don't include 13 because this is strictly less than. And so we can say that the universal set, xi, has all these elements. Okay. A are prime numbers, and so prime numbers, but you know what? It's not just all the prime numbers in the world, because we are limited to the universal set. It's all the prime numbers in the universal set. So we have 3, 4 is not, 5 is a prime number, 6 is not, 7 is a prime number, 9, 8 is not, 9 is not, 10 is not, 11 is, and 12 is not a prime number. Once again, uh, prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided by 1 and itself. And, and these two have to be distinct numbers. Okay, B are multiples of 6. So when you think of multiples of 6, think 6 times something. Anything. 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4. So, uh, 3 is not 6 times anything. 4, no. Okay, 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2, 12. That's it. It has to be 6 times something which is uh, whereby that something is an integer. Okay, in C, which actually <laughs> brings us to part A, factors of 24. So factors of 24 means we break 24 down into all possible numbers, whereby when you multiply them together, it gives you back 24. So can I break down 24 into uh, its factors? So we can, usually I do it this way, 24. And I say divide by 2, gives me 12. Divide by 3, gives me 4. Divide by 2 again, gives me 2. 2 again, gives me 1. And there you go. So I can say 24 equals to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And I've broken it down to all its prime factors. So 2 and 3 are definitely inside. Okay, but in this case, 2 is not even in the universal set. right? There's no 2 here. No 2. So we only take 3. But we're not done because we can actually combine some of the factors because we could say 2 times 2 is 4. So this is actually 4, right, times 2 times 3. And so 4 is also a factor. And so we can say 4 is here. And we can also say maybe 2 times 2 times 2, which is 4 times 2. This 2 multiplied together is 8 times 3. So 8 is also a factor. And on the other hand, I could also write this as 2 times 2 times, and 2 times 3 gives me 6. So 6 also is a factor, right? 6 also is a factor. And then I can also combine these two to give uh, 2 times 12. So 12 also is a factor. And there you go. Uh, so... I like to write them in a proper order. So 8 and 6, I'm just going to reorder them. So let's write it this way. And there you go. These are actually all the elements of C. So I'm just going to zoom out for you to take a look. I'm going to write C. 3, 4, 6, 8. Yep. Now for part B, we're looking at A intersect C. That means these elements must be in both A and C, right? This means in both A 
and C. The technical term is intersect, which means it's in both A and C. So what elements are in both A and C? Let's try to take a look. Uh, we have three is in both A and C. Four, no, six, no, five, no. Just three, only three. So this set, A intersects C, only has one element in it, which is three. Finally, part B, in the following, put a tick for the correct statements provided. Okay, so this is 12 is not an element of, so this is not an element, element of, that means 12 does not belong inside the set. Uh, is that true? Yes, 12 is not inside this set, so that is true. So this is true. Okay, B intersect C is 3, 4, 5, and 8, so let's look. B and C, um, that means th the elements must be in both B and C. Well, 3 is not even in B, so this is automatically wrong because intersect means the elements must be in both B and C. So, sorry, uh, this, is definitely, this is definitely wrong because B doesn't even have 3 in it. Next, A intersect B is a null set. Null set... Uh, it means that there's nothing inside the set. So A intersect B, let's take a look. That means nothing in common. That means A and B have nothing in common. Is that true? A intersect B is a null set. And yes, that actually seems true. But the problem is when we look at this, this itself is a null set. So to put this set within, within a set, it doesn't make sense. It actually doesn't make sense. Yeah? Because uh, you should say a null set looks like this. It is a set itself, but with, with, with nothing inside. So you, you don't put a set within a set in this case, so we don't take it. Okay, next thing, A union B is all these. So A union B means you take everything from A and everything from B. You want, you want both, right? everything in A and everything in B. Is that true? So let's look. Uh, A union B. We want 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12. And so do we get that? 3, 4, 5. Yes, that looks right. Everything in A and everything in B. And of course, you don't have to overlap. So you don't have to write 3 twice. Right? You just write 3 once because the element is there. It is there. Okay, last statement. This means number of elements. So it's saying the number of elements in B intersect C is 2. So let's look at B intersect C, what it is. So B intersect C actually is you want elements that are both in B and C. And that actually only gives me two elements. Right, 6 and 12. Yep. So B intersect C is simply 6 and 12. You're looking for elements that are in both B and C. And the number of elements, yes, there are two elements. There you go. So this is also true. Number of elements, 